Hi guys, welcome back to Codemaster Coach, your medical coding tutor. Guys, I'm continuing this February series where I prepare for you a couple of CPC review questions along with answering my top 10 questions asked of me on my YouTube channel. So, in answering a question posed from my viewers, my subscribers on YouTube, the next biggest question I get is, which certification should I sit for? Which national certification coding should I go for? And guys, that's really not a question that I can answer for you. You have to decide what do you want to do? Because remember, certifications are based on the healthcare setting of which you want to work. So if you want to work in an outpatient setting, go for outpatient certification. And if inpatient coding interests you, then go for inpatient certification. And again, I would I'd advise you guys to check any ads where you live or at places that you're interested in working because a lot of times the ad will tell you which certification that employer is looking for. Right off the top of my head I can tell you for outpatient I recommend a CPC certification. And in addition for specialty type coding in outpatient such as for example um, if you desire, desire to work in a physician's office or um, same day surgery, ancillary services, emergency room coding, um, observation, such like I would say start with an outpatient certification and grow. If you desire, desire inpatient coding I'd recommend the C, CCS um, certification but again CCS is recommended after experience. That's a more advanced coding certification, but CCS is inpatient coding certification. Um, but again, it depends, and there are sp several specialty certifications. If you go on the AAPC website, they have anesthesia, dermatology, you name it. Any type of specialty coding that you might do, you can find those specialty certifications on the AAPC website. So again, when I'm constantly asked which certification should you guys go for, it's going to depend on you. You're going to have to make that call, and it's really determined based on the type of coding that you want to do. So do your research. Again, I'm always telling you guys, don't count on other people to tell you what you need to do. Do your research, and you decide what's best for you. Others like me could help you along the way, but again, that's your call to make. Um, so again, check your employer ads where you live. See what they're looking for so that you don't waste your time and go for a certification that doesn't hold water. It won't help you find employment. And in whatever places that you're interested in coding. Okay, guys, so now my coding uh, my CPC exam review questions. I have two, but I want to start first with answering the question from yesterday's question, which was about the ABNs. So let me show you what I have. All right. Yesterday's question. It asks, for the CPC test review questions, when should an ABN be signed? When should an ABN be signed? And guys, the answer is right there, B. When a service is not expected to be covered by Medicare. That's when an ABN should be signed. And then question number two was, the amount of an ABN should be within how much of the cost to the patient? And the answer is $100 or 25% of cost. And of course, I bring my documentation. Again, I've done my research. And the answer says, an advanced beneficiary notice, ABN, also known as a waiver of liability, is a notice a provider should give to you as the patient before you receive a service if, based on Medicare coverage rules, your provider has reason to believe that Medicare will not pay for the service. The ABN allows you to decide whether to get the care in question and to accept financial responsibility for the service if Medicare denies payment. Now this means that you will pay for the service out of pocket. CMS expects 
that the estimate should be within $100, there's our answer, or 25% of the actual cost, whichever is greater. However, an estimate that exceeds the actual cost subst substantially would generally still be acceptable since the beneficiary would not be harmed if the actual cost was less than predicted. So, hopefully these two questions have motivated you to do your homework about ABNs. Alright, today's question. When coding for a patient who has had a primary malignancy of the thyroid gland that was completely excised a year ago and there is no current treatment directed at that site. Which of the following statements is true? A. When no, no further treatment is provided and there is no evidence of any existing malignancy, primary malignancy, then you code, code Z85.850. Or, when further treatment is provided and there is evidence of an existing metastasis, code first the Z85.850 and then the C32.3. Or, is it C? Any mention of excision, invasion, or metastasis to another site is coded as D49.1. Or is it D? When further treatment is provided and there is evidence of an existing metastasis, code first C78.39. Alright. Question number two. When, when would be, no, what would be the appropriate way to code removal of 30 skin tags in CPT? What it would be the appropriate way to code removal of 30 skin tags in CPT? Is it A, 11201 times 3? Is it B, 11200 and 11201? Or C, 11200, 11201 times 2? Or D, 11200, 11201 with modifier 51 times 2. Okay, guys? Stay tuned tomorrow for the answers to these questions. Thanks.